video is a continuation of our work last week with composing emails in Gmail. So I just want to show you a couple more features that there, uh, that Gmail has included and they are found right here in formatting options. So if when you open your email you don't see this, all you have to do is click on the A. I'm going to take you from left to right. Left and right here we have the undo and the redo bar. And if you notice, this looks a lot like what you'd see in Microsoft Word or in Google Docs. Here you have different fonts that you can choose. For uh, emails that are professional or in school, I suggest always using sans serif. But if you wanted to get fancy at some point, you can highlight whatever you want to change and maybe make it a serif. Moving on, this T, a little T and a big T, it lets you decide how big you want the text to be. Again, if you're emailing us, always keep it at normal. Right now, I have it on large just so you can see it better for the video. This is what it should really look like, but because of the video, I made it large. And then we have bold, uh, italics, underline, so maybe I want to bold front loading. Uh, maybe I want to make conclusion be an italic. Maybe I'm going to underline pioneers, right? So I can kind of play with that a little bit. Those are good for adding emphasis, but remember you should never over use them. Um, here I have whether or not I want this to be aligned to the left or to the center or to the right. Keeping things the default is probably the best way to look as professional as possible. Here I have an option for numbers and bullet points. Because I have a list here, I am going to put that in bullet points because that looks nicer. There we go. I might take away some space here because it looks too spacious. All right. There, I have a list right there. I can also, if I wanted it to, maybe it's steps that I want to take, I would make it into numbers, but otherwise it's like that. We don't have to worry about these just yet, but they're used when you want to indent something, right? So I don't like the change I just made. I'm going to undo. I skipped over this part. I can, I can make a color, so maybe I want my list to be in blue, right? And maybe I'm replying to a message and I hate that list and I'm going to put strike through so it crosses everything out. And then maybe you've done all this and you think, man, this looks very kind of confusing or I'm busy. I'm going to undo it all. So you can highlight everything and then you can remove all the formatting and it'll take it just like it was when you first typed it. And again, you could always use undo, undo, undo. Something I didn't show you last week either are the emojis. It is very rare that it would be appropriate to use emojis in a professional or academic setting. And then I can show you this later in on the class, but this little pin here, you can pre-make your signature. So I can click this and it'll come up Mr. Branson with the little Mahal logo. All right, so really what we're focusing on this time around is what's available in the text formatting. And then one more thing. So let's say that I wrote this letter to Mr. Millette and it was over the weekend just because I was excited but I knew that Mr. Millette was spending the weekend with family so I don't want him to get a notification on his phone that I sent an email when it's just about work stuff so once you type a name in here because if you don't type it it won't work so I'll type one to Mr. Millette you can schedule a send so I don't want to send it right now on the long weekend I'm gonna send it tomorrow morning at 8 in the morning right or maybe yeah 8 in the morning I click on it and there we go and I have it in my scheduled folder scheduled so I have it here and if I want I can edit it I can cancel this end right so I'm gonna do that so Mr. Millet doesn't get this random email and it brings it back up into my compose window so I can add things to it or change it around if I want alright pretty straightforward I'm gonna give you a preview with class on Tuesday. So um, you are going to be working in breakout rooms again and you're going to be writing an email using following these steps, right? You're going to write a relevant subject. You are going to start the message with Dear Mr. Branson and Mr. Millett or Hi Mr. Branson and Mr. Millett. Get a short greeting. Don't just start talking in the email but say things like I really enjoyed your class yesterday or I hope you're feeling well, things like that. Then you're going to make a bullet list with, remember I showed you how to do that by highlighting and clicking over here. You're gonna make a bullet list answering these questions. What are some things you enjoyed about ELA last week? What are some things you did not enjoy? How do you feel about front-loading instead of homework? 
And what are some things you want to learn about this year? This question is new. You're going to attach a file from your computer using this button. You're going to link to an ELA front-loading video. So I want to show you how to do that actually because I don't think we linked to a video yet. I have a video here of the front-loading video from before. I'm going to click on share and it's going to give me a link that I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back and I'm going to highlight the text that I want someone to click on to go to that YouTube video and then I'm going to click on this link here. I'm going to paste the YouTube link and I'm going to hit OK and it's automatically underlined in blue so the person who reads your email knows they can click on it and get a YouTube video. And actually what's great is in Gmail when you link to a YouTube video it will put the YouTube video on the bottom of the message for your recipient so they can just click on it. They don't even have to click on this link. Alright, you link one of your Google Docs by clicking here. You put an image in the body by clicking here and if it's funny you'll get extra points. Funny and appropriate. So I want you to bold your first answer. I want you to italicize your second. I want you to underline your third and I want you to change the color of your fourth to purple. Alright, that's what you're going to do in your email. Then you are going to address it to Mr. Branson and Mr. Millette. Now, I think most of you will be tempted to fill this out before you write your message. And actually, it's a life pro tip not to do that. Because imagine you accidentally hit send and you're not finished yet. It might look unprofessional or maybe you regret what you wrote. So it's always better to look over your email once you feel that it's perfect. Then go to recipients and type in your teacher's names or whoever, who's ever named. Then you're going to CC your classmate down here. Classmate, 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 classmate. And then finally you're going to schedule the email to arrive to us at 1240. So you're going to go to schedule send. I can't because I typed in these crazy fake email addresses. So I can schedule send and then I'm going to pick a time, a date and a time. And so tomorrow's Tuesday and you're going to pick 1240, is that what I said? Yeah, you're going to pick 1240. So schedule. Pick a time and date, change this to 1240, and schedule send. 1240, why is that under? 1240 p.m. Oh, because it already happened. <laughs> My fault. Tomorrow's the 8th. Now that should work. All right. <laughs> figuring things out with you on the video. You see how here it just automatically included the YouTube video? So that's great. That's all we have for today. I wish you guys the best of luck.